So now that we have our node set up, let's work on actually fulfilling requests and getting some data into our smart contracts based off of triggers that happen on chain. Mm, let's get some data. At this point, the prerequisites for this video are that you have a node operator's UI up. You don't have any jobs running. You don't have any link gaining. You have no Oracle contract. That's it. All you have is a node up. Woo! Woo! Which is still great. Good job. That is the precursor to this. Now, I'll tell you right now, everything that we're going to go over is in the Chainlink documentation. And because the technology is so cutting edge, it often updates rapidly. So definitely go check out the docs. Definitely take a look at those. Uh, to make sure you're running the most up-to-date what they are. And jump into the Discord, say hello, say hi if you need help. So here's what it's going to look like. Our Chainlink node is going to have a list of services that it can give. And you can check it out on market.link. There's a ton of nodes there already that have the different jobs that they can support. These jobs are the services that they can support. The simplest one is an HTTP GET returning a UINT 256. So, What's gonna happen is this job needs to be specified that they want to perform that service or, or make that API call. In addition, the smart contract that wants the data also has to request your node. So they need to do two things. They need to define your Oracle contract address and the job ID or the tasks that they'd like to specify. So what they do is this, their smart contract that is deployed makes this request, to our Chainlink Oracle contract that we're going to deploy in a little bit, that Chainlink Oracle contract emits a log. Our off-chain Chainlink node is reading for that log. Again, this is with the run log initiator. Don't worry about what that means right now. It's reading this log and it picks up, ah, ah, somebody sent our Oracle smart contract some link. I'm going to go get that data for you. Don't worry. I'll get that data. Don't worry about it. So they go get the data and they do whatever else is defined in that job. And then if the job spec has an ETX adapter or task, and again, we'll talk about that later, it returns the data through this Oracle contract. The Chainlink node actually makes an external transaction with this request back, and that is the full cycle here. So we're going to go into actually setting up that infrastructure right there, because right now we just have the Chainlink node set up. It can't really do anything other than be awesome. Let's do it. So you have this UI up, you have nothing in here. Like I said, we're gonna be following exactly from this documentation here. The first thing that we need to do is check if we've done these prerequisites. Definitely go through the beginner walkthrough. Um, you don't really have to have run an Ethereum client, but you need an Ethereum client like Infura, for example, um, but obviously you need to run a chain like node. So the first thing that we need to do actually is make sure our node address is funded. So when you get your node, it comes with this node address here. So this is an address, so we're on, on the Coven chain. We're on the Coven chain here. And this is the, actually the address that is going to make the transactions back on chain, right? So if, if I request data to your Oracle, that data needs to come back on chain somehow. So the Chainlink node is actually going to make a, an external transaction that puts the data back. So it needs ETH gas to do this. Or, uh, you know, if it's multi-chain, obviously, uh, whatever whatever that chain's gas is. So what we're going to do, so what we're going to do, I'm on the Coven testnet here, obviously, is we're going to send this some Coven ETH. We're going to send it some Coven ETH, and this is, this is going to be the gas. So we just sent it, and great. So it's coming. We now have a balance of three. So the next bit is going to actually deploy that uh, Oracle contract that we were talking about. And this is going to be the contract. Other users are going to be routing their, their requests. But anyways, so we're here. So we've compiled it. This imports everything. Let's deploy it. Injected Web3, of course. At this point, you should be used to kind of this, this walkthrough. So we actually have to deploy it with the link address. So we're going to do link address coven, and it should pop right up. Boom, right here. Pop it in here and deploy. And so again, this is the, if the chain that you're integrating with is EVM compatible, this entire process looks exactly the same. I know, really cool. So great. So now we have done this Oracle contract address. It's got a whole bunch of stuff here and we can see the owner of it is who just deployed it. So the owner of it is me. And there's a whole bunch of only owner functions that can be called in here. So again, we're going to literally keep going through the, the documentation here. So we deployed it and now we have to set fulfillment permissions. So we actually, this is what we're doing to connect our Chainlink node to our Oracle contract. So in here, we have to do set fulfillment permission to true. So we're adding our Oracle 
our Chainlink Oracle's uh, wallet address to our Oracle smart contract. Set fulfillment permission that to true, confirm. And this is gonna be the transaction that actually allows um, our node to withdraw and interact with this uh, Oracle contract. So cool, so we have it connected. What's the next step? So we're going to grab a job spec and I'm going to talk a little bit about what this is. So these are these tasks, right? These are some of the, the super simple basic ones that almost every Oracle is going to have. This is exactly what a job looks like. This is what defines a job. A job is a combination of initiators and tasks. And you'll also refer to tasks as adapters. The initiators define how a job is going to kick off. And in this case, we're doing what's called a run log initiator, which is that process I was explaining before. It's reading the logs, and once it finds the log that says, hey, your Oracle and your job ID, kick off the tasks. So once it does, it's gonna kick off these tasks. And you notice there's nothing here. So we can actually define tasks or the uh, the parameters in here by doing like params, uh, and then blah, 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 whatever the params are but we're gonna leave it blank. And leaving it blank means actually whoever's requesting the data uh, can send the parameters that they want. Uh, they don't need to send parameters for these two. So this job is defining making an HTTP GET, an API call, getting the specific key, um, the, the value of a key of that API call, multiplying it, so to remove the decimals because Solidity doesn't work great with decimals, and then turning that number into a Solidity compatible number and then ETHTX is posting it back on chain. So let's make this job, invalid job spec. Oh, I forgot to put in my Oracle contract address. So this Oracle contract address that we just deployed, we're gonna copy, and you'll wanna keep this around, but you know, luckily it'll be in job spec. And we paste it in here. We're saying, hey, read this Oracle contracts run log. Read this Oracle contracts log. So, so you just add your Oracle contract address in here. And if you're on this version, there's a new feature in here. We can actually give them names, which is awesome. So we're going to call this get, what are we returning? You went 256, you went 256. Cool. So let's create this job. And now if we go to jobs, we have this get you went 256 job. This naming feature is going to be so helpful. Uh, and now we have our job. So fantastic. We have this job. Now we can just do exactly what we did in the example walkthrough. So there's a whole lot of stuff in here, uh, but basically this one, request Ethereum price, uh, it's it's getting a uint 256, and that's exactly the only job that we have right now, this get uint 256. So what we're gonna do in here is we're going to, and again, it, it can be anything, you know, you can, you can use any API that you want, but we're gonna be calling this API. This is the, the get, so we're getting, we're giving it, the HTTP GET params right here, and you see actually some of this got populated when we made the job. Uh, we're giving it the params for that. We're giving it the path, which is USD, which is in this JSON parse bit here. And we're giving it the multiply or times, which is this multiply right here. And again, we don't need to add parameters for these two adapters because the, the params are built in for both of these, right? Let's compile this, our node hooray.soul, and then actually by convention, this O should be capitalized, but we're not gonna worry about it. Um, so that's our Oracle, great. We're gonna deploy this now. Deploy this contract. And we see in this, we're taking two parameters in this. We're taking the Oracle and the job ID. So oftentimes in a lot of the demos, I'll actually just hard code it so that I don't have to keep typing it in. But for this, just to really show you it, uh, we're going to we're going to add it in manually here. Uh, request Ethereum price. This is the function that we're looking for. And again, we're using this one because this one's actually going to return um, a uint 256, and we know what it what it, it's going to return by going to its fulfillment function. But its fulfillment function is actually returning a uint 256. So some of these other ones are returning different types and our job won't be able to return the data if we return the wrong type. So, so that's really, really important. We're gonna put our Oracle contract address in here, which again, we can find really easily right here. We're gonna add our, our Oracle contract address here, and then we're gonna add our new job ID, which is not the name, um, it's this right here. And we're gonna just input them both as strings for now. Request Ethereum price, and we're gonna get this gas estimation error. 
Uh, and so I, I kind of always intentionally do this because when you're working with oracles, you have to pay an oracle fee. And actually the link um, that gets paid is actually defined in your node itself. So if you do minimum contract payment, this is in way, it's actually defaulted to 0.1. So I think in, in this, we're defining it as one link, but we're kind of overpaying here, uh, but it's just a demo, so it doesn't matter. So you can actually define this in your .env file. Uh, you can also define it on a job spec level. And when somebody looks at your node on a node listing service, uh, that's how they'll know how much the, the fee costs for this APR cost. Let's send our contract some link and yet yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll overkill just in case we want to do a number of tests. We'll send two link. So now if I hit this, it shouldn't have that gas estimation error. And sure enough, it pops up. We're going to confirm. And now we have this Coven link that pops up saying, Hey, we're sending it. But if we look at our node, oh, hopefully we didn't miss it. Created just now. This is a, a wonderful feeling when this actually comes in. This is saying, ah, oh, I'm I'm reading the Ethereum chain and I found something. Somebody is pinging your node. Somebody wants data from you. And um, once all the all the pieces come in, we can actually see. We'll see all the parameters. Here's the get. You know, here's the path. Here's the these. This is all the parameters that was just sent to us. And it looks like it's completed. If we go back here. If we click current price now, we actually have the value returned from our Chainlink node. So this is, now you have your Chainlink node set up, it can actually fulfill requests. But the next question is gonna be, well, how does somebody find my node? How does how do I get business for this node? Well, that is a great question. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is put your node information on a node listing service. So two of the most popular ones are market.link and reputation.link. I, I gotta call these guys out. These guys are doing some awesome stuff. Um, they even like show some of the best, uh, responding oracles, uh, which is really cool. So you're going to want to list your node on market.link. Um, and this is where you can go, uh, and list your jobs as well. Right. So if I'm looking for like, you know, a get you went 256 job, uh, I can see all these nodes on mainnet have it. Let's look at Coven. All these nodes on, on Coven have it. We can click here. We can see some of the jobs that they uh, that they currently have, and you can browse through them. And you can even uh, uh, reach out to some of these guys. You know, this one, for example, is me. You can reach out to some of them and say, "Hey, you know, I'd love it if you could add this this new job or something. I'd love it if you'd add this um, this new feature." And there's a, a request, a, a node operator request channel in the uh, the Chainlink Discord. They can jump in and say hi. You can jump into the Alpha Chain Discord as well. Say hi to me, uh, anybody else who's in there. But this is going to be how you're going to get business. Is you're going to list it here. You're going to list your services um, and everything. And remember, anybody who's going to go production with uh, with something can't just rely solely on you. They need to have their data be decentralized. And and again, with price feeds, for example, feeds I'll change that link. For price feeds, for example, this is, you know, this is a perfect uh, example. These are some of the clients, all this massive list of some of the top DeFi projects. And these are all the nodes that are responding with it. So you absolutely can never be the only one returning data. Exception to that is with the Chainlink VRF. So that's it. I hope this was really helpful. I hope you get your nodes spun up. I hope you can fulfill requests. I hope you head over to market.link and you list your service on there and you start trying to get some business and be a part of the Chainlink ecosystem. Again, this video helped you spin up your own node and fulfill your own functions. Definitely tweet at me, definitely tweet at Alpha Chainio or at Patrick Alpha C. Definitely jump in the Chainlink community and say hello, say, oh my gosh, we built it. And uh, I hope to see you there. Talk soon, guys.